Hello once again folks, Ta Fáilte Roy Varish de Cardia Iasgri. You're all welcome along my fishing friends to another video from Gundog and Fly. And um, it's now round about the end of June, just heading into July. And um, to say it's been an unusual season would be somewhat of an understatement. Um, fishing was really good in the month of May and for part of June and then the last week in particular. I mean, this is 2022 and the last few days of June have been really like February weather. It's been really, really cold. So much so that I actually had to leave the river the other night. It, my fingers became numb. That's how cold it was. I've never ever seen anything like it in all the years I've been fishing. It's the most unusual of weather. And it's that way again this evening. Um, I can't explain it, I don't know what it is, global warming or whatever the case may be, I don't know how to account for it, but it's just really, really out of the ordinary altogether. Um, the fishing has been detrimentally affected, of course. Cold weather like that stops flies hatching, it stops spinners coming back to lay eggs, and the fish are not active as a consequence, and of course, the f you're not gonna catch as many fish. So. That's how it is currently, but um, there's hope for the future. Apparently it's gonna change in the next few days. Normally this time of the year, I'd be fishing in the evening time in a t-shirt. There's no way you would survive out there in a t-shirt now. It's just so bitterly cold, unbelievable weather. Anyway, that's it about the weather. This video anyway, this time around, I have um, a fly time video for you. I have a brilliant little dry fly that um, I think you're gonna really, really like, and it's really, really easy and simple to tie. So, um, if you like my videos, you might consider subscribing. Just click on the subscribe button and you'll be kept updated each time a video is um, uploaded to YouTube. And if you, um, you might consider clicking on the link in the description there to my Patreon page, where if you'd like to make a small contribution to the channel, that would be much appreciated. So, without further ado, let's get into the tying of this brilliant little dry fly. Right folks, the tying of this fly, like I say, is very, very simple. This hook here is a size 16. It's best tied in size 16 or smaller. Um, for wild trout on rivers, it's just absolutely brilliant. Like I say, this is a 16. Um, it works, I'm tying it on a 16 because it's um, easier for you to see. Typically I would tie it on 18 or 20 for general use but 16 is also fine it works really well the tying thread i'm going to use in here is sample fly wax thread and uh, in this case i'm using purple and um, this is 80 thread so basically start off just behind the eye here and touching turns all the way down along, right around the bend. Now I'm using purple, but um, as you'll see at the end, you can use any color you like to match the hatch, or just for experimentation purposes, use different colors. So this is purple, and I'm coming back up again over the hook to roughly a third of the way back. Now, the feather I'm going to use came from this. Uh, if you want to tie good quality 
flies, you need to good, use good quality hackle. And this is good quality hackle. This is grizzle hackle. I call this fly, by the way, I call it a grizzly emerger. Now this is one feather from that. That's an actual saddle. Um, this is just one feather. So with this one feather, you can tie quite a few flies. And it's got nice and slim and it's very pliable. Um, of course, needless to say, because they're such high quality, you will pay a premium for them. But in my view, they're very, very much worth any money you pay for them. So here we go. See how simple this fly is to tie. Okay, I'm tying in that feather just there. And now I'm going to do two turns. Then bring the thread forward, catch it in. A further two turns and again bring the thread forward catch it in another two turns get the thread to catch it in and another one or two turns right at the eye and now I'm going to tie that in with a few nice tight turns Trim off the surplus there and I'm going to whip finish just behind the eye. Now you can fish the fly just as is there, but how, it, how what really makes it work, I think, is when you clip it underneath. Cut all the hackle away from underneath. Now, you can speculate as to what it represents. I think myself it's probably some form of midge representation because when I fish it in the really small sizes, they take it in a really, really gentle and subtle way. And um, that's it, it's that simple to tie. Very, very easy. Anyone with any modicum of experience of tying flies should be easily able to manage this fly. So that's it with a purple, really slim. The body is really slim and it sinks under the surface. The hackle, of course, you apply a little floatant on it, gink or some such potion. That will keep it floating, although it'll float without floating as well. Um, it's a brilliant fly, particularly for summer conditions in low water conditions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with a few photographs of this fly with different color bodies and you can then make up your own mind um, and tie for your own local river or your lake or whatever the case may be. And I think if you give this fly a try, you will not be disappointed. So, Uramanele, Gora Milamahagui, as for Koloider, Agas Gadi, Kihmeherish, Shiv, Bigi Slan, Agas Bigi, as Eastgrat. Slagafoil.